friends, this is second part on our green earth and today we will talk about two different green earths but from same place. Tavush green earth on left side and you can see how transparent this color is where on the right side we call transparent Tavush green which is even more transparent the first one. You're probably wondering what's the name on these colors? And this is actually the real place in Armenia. The, both colors come from the Tavush province of Armenia and specifically, and I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce it correctly, Ijevan, the community, and the deposit of Ijevanskaya. It's Ijevanskaya. Ah. Nesterajdenia. Yes. So, like always, we want to, to compare some colors, what you already familiar in our uh, line, and it's with uh, Nicosia Green Earth. In our colors, it's probably the coolest green what we have, but nevertheless, we decided to show you how it looks as a pigment again. I will show you here how Nicosia Green Earth looks like as a pigment. Probably the darkest one and the um, coolest one. Here's Tavush, regular Tavush Green Earth. And here's Transparent. And you see how in pigment it's very yellowish. It's also lighter in color, which gives you a clue that it's going to be fairly transparent, especially if it's an earth pigment. Both Tavush transparent and the green earth are from the mineral selenite. Selenite is a phyllosilicate mineral, and it contains different amounts of iron, calcium, aluminum, magnesium, sodium, and so forth, trace elements. It's a green mineral that often comes in tiny flakes, such like mineral mica or in small lumps of clay. As always, we mix that with aged refined linseed oil. It doesn't take much oil, which is a surprise actually to, to see because both Tavush and the transparent Tavush obviously have other minerals. Yes. Yeah. This is what we call the oil absorption value for a pigment. And we've, uh, we have another video where we show how that's calculated, which is quite easy actually, just the amount of oil per 100 grams of pigment. So grinding was very easy. Right from the beginning, you can see then when I scrape the pigment from the glass, the glass almost clean. So that will give you idea then how transparent color is. Right, high tinting color, a lot of color strength, <laughs> very low tinting. Uh, and some people like that because it gives them control in color mixtures, which we'll see later on. But some of you absolutely hate that, so then at least now you will know. So this is very low chroma and uh, very transparent colors. Here's from the tube, like always, and you can see here's separation. Don't just be aware, don't break out. It's uh, almost always on our Armenian colors, we do have separation. We don't put any additives on our colors. And that's why we get a little bit more separation yeah. there. But you get the pure pigment and oil that is unadulterated with any kind of additives so that it gives you whatever characteristic that pigment's going to do, as we can see here. If you don't need that oil, you can just squeeze a little bit of color on the paper towel and oil will suck up. Or you can mix back if you need that oil. Here's our transparent Tavush green. This is probably the warmest one color among the all our green earths. 
you know, this mineral selenite varies in color from very pale greens, as we see here in, in the transparent tabouche, to almost a bright green in some cases, or a bluish green. And as we saw in previous part of the green earths, could even be an olive green or even a very darkish green. And it really depends on the constituent elements because it's never a pure substance. It's a mineral, but it always has trace elements. You can see how easy mixing this with, again, with H3 fine pencil oil. We don't put any other oil in our green earth. The word selenite comes from the Greek word, or actually I should say the French word, for celadon, which means sea green. And that's where that mineral name comes from. And green earths have been used since ancient times. They've been found in, in uh, uh, the masks and paintings in Egypt. Here's from the two. Here I was smarter. I feel that mixing together before the showing your color. And here's again from the tube. And now you can see Mansell numbers. Very fluffy, both of them. Very short colors. You will not see that uh, long stripes or strings. 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 String. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's a, um, it has. It peaks up a little bit, yes. which it wouldn't be the case at all if it had additives. Yes. Like the aluminum stearate in most colors. As always, we will show you how these two colors behave with white. In this case, we take in lead white, and of course, that would be probably one part of lead white to three parts of tabouche green. Here's half and half. The last part will be with three parts of lead white and one part of the green. And you can see how transparent these, these colors are. Tinting very fast. Right, with the lead white. And lead white isn't extremely opaque white like titanium is, as you're going to see in the next scene. Here's Tavush Transparent Greeners. Like George said, it's very easy tinting and so then very uh, almost... Almost but, disappearing. Yes. But that's an advantage. It's yes. an advantage because it doesn't dominate colors, especially if you're trying to mix a green into a color and it just becomes green instead of tinting it kind of a cool yeah. color. We have several of these slow tinting colors, and so if you are interested, we can have a special program for that. By the way, write us, call us, and I know so many people, uh, you know, you call us and tell us thanks for what we're doing for you. So then if you're interested in special colors, just write to us or call. We would be happy to do this. What I did notice with titanium white, of course, because titanium is very cool white, that probably was most beautiful, and you never will believe what I will say right now, most beautiful blues. If you are painting seascapes, probably most likely it's Tavush Green with titanium would be your most useful friends. Yeah, that's why it's called Sea Green. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Solo Delight. Okay, okay. So here again, another attempt to warm down even more on these greens. We mix with lemon ochre because lemon ochre is a little bit more transparent than, let's say, like blue rich yellow ochre. But to be completely honest, I didn't like at all what I was expecting to make this different leafy greenish yellow. In my case, I thought it looks muddy. What do you think? Oh, I think that's its place. Okay. As all these colors do, actually. And when you're painting realistic scenes, colors are often somewhat muddy. You... And that's where the advantage, where you pull in a really high chroma color to give that key emphasis. Yeah. 
I maybe I, I spoke wrong. Maybe not like muddy, but but maybe like dead. It's, like, well, it's or? it's it's not saturated. It's not a high chroma color, but that's beautiful, and that's what you find in nature. Yeah. It's actually with transparent tavush was much more cleaner colors than let's say just with tavush. So here is was mixing colors with both colors with Venetian red to see what browns or probably like grays I can make it and so since uh, it's not very so, yeah so transparent it did like kill the Venetian red kill immediately yeah the greens and so but an interesting nice look at that brown especially with the titanium, the titanium white yes. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of a almost a pinkish flesh tone, but yeah, killed you know, toned down, Ooh. which is what you see you wanna, how I see how easy I that goes. Yes, yeah. wow. so we try and again and again, and uh, adding a little bit more because just yeah. went right over the top. Yeah, very interesting color. And again, we'll see with a little bit of titanium white. different results than from yellow in my case. Here again comparison with lead white and titanium on left side tabouche, on right side tabouche transparent green. And again thank you to being with us today. Bye now. See you next time. <laughs>